morning, everybody. Welcome morning. to the new age. <laughs> we are fortunate to have with us retired intermediate court of appeals judge Walter Karamitsu, <laughs> stellar constitutional attorney Jeff Portnoy, <laughs> legal scholar, constitutional scholar Ben Davis from the University of Toledo Law School, <laughs> and former Northern Illinois and Southern Texas Dean Jim Alfini and professor. Uh, Gentlemen, welcome. Hopefully, this may be the beginning of a new age. We're looking at a timetable here that is coming right down on us. By spring and summer, the parties selected their electors. And we know that in 2016, there were seven electors who didn't follow the voters' mandate. And so, it's likely that the parties were pretty careful this time to choose people who would. Hey. On November 3rd, we had the vote. There are still things going on about that. By December 8th, all of the disputes regarding the electoral votes, court recounts, whatever, are to be resolved six days before the meeting of the electors on December 14th to cast their votes. The votes are to be received by December 23rd. Congress meets in joint session on January 6th to count the votes. And the inauguration is January 20th. So that's our timetable. We know that Senator Rubio and a Republican representative have tried to get the Senate and the House to extend those deadlines to January 1st. We're not seeing support for that at this point, and we're seeing an increasing number of Republican leaders and office holders who are coming out saying, hey, let's follow the schedule. So let's see what happens. Gentlemen, where do you think we're headed? Well, I'll go first since everybody else is so reticent. <laughs> uh, I think this is much ado about nothing on a practical basis. On an institutional basis, I think it's a crisis. But I think this too shall pass. Biden has and is going to be confirmed to have in excess of 300 electoral votes. So even if seven or 10 renegade electors decide to go elsewhere, it makes no difference. The recounts statistically have no chance, no chance of success. I understand from people much more involved in history than I am that in any recount in a statewide election in the United States, the most votes change were less than a thousand. And Biden's uh, vote count in every one of the states at issue except Arizona, continues to increase. And in Arizona, he's up by way more than can possibly turn out from a recount. I think Trump, like every three-year-old, is going through a temper tantrum stage. And like any three-year-old, they eventually move on to play with a new toy. I'm going to guess that once the Georgia recount is over, he will not concede. I don't think he will ever, quote, concede. But I think all of this litigation and turmoil will be over as far as Biden. My last point, however, is I am fearful about what Trump and his people will do between now and January 20th as far as United States policies, domestic and foreign. What do you think might happen? We've already seen Department of Defense basically gutted for lackeys. I think he will fire the CIA director. I think he will fire the FBI director. I think he will fire every single person he thinks has not been 100% loyal. And all it's going to mean is that Joe Biden's going to have a lot of positions to fill in the first couple of weeks as he fires all of these last minute Trump replacements 
and replaces them with his people. Gentlemen, Brother Ben. ben. Yeah, one of the things is, is there was an order that was done to reclassify a bunch of people in the civil service so that they can be fired. So that order, he's going to try to do some stuff about it. I'm, I'm, I, mean, I, I fear that kind of uh, bloodletting. That's the kind of guy he is. Uh, beyond that, the national security establishment is very worried about what's going on right now. Right. They're really very worried about it. And uh, not so much the uniform. The uniform, I think they feel comfortable that Millie has learned his lessons from that thing back in, in June. Uh, but but the, the in the suit, you know the you know the the people in the suits, so to speak, about all this. I mean, when you think about it, with seventy days to go, you remember your first seventy days on a job, right? Well, that's this new acting director of defense, right? Instead of just a smooth out with Esper, you have somebody who's kind of stepping in. That that is a real worry. Well, hopefully, this will hold together. Uh, but uh, the other thing is that I just want to say is that. It, I think one of the reasons the blocking of transition teams is that they don't want anybody to see what's under the hood, okay, and across the government. Because there would be these professionals who come in, and there have been pretty much a lot of, how can I say it, incompetence, who have been running various parts of the government. And uh, they'll come in and they'll see under the hood. And, you know, they'll know what sort of administration looks like. And... Uh, and this is, by the way, not a Republican or Democrat thing. It's like, it's just incompetence thing in terms of the people who were there. Uh, uh, so I would say that uh, that's really a, a, a certain part of us. Uh, Trump's peak in silence for five days is pretty appalling, quite honestly. Uh, but uh, what bothers me more than anything is that the people have voted and there's this group of people who seem to be unable to just go along with the fact that the people have voted. For some reason, they have so much fear of Trump or their 2024 vision or whatever. And it's really pitiful to watch people who are grown men and women uh, cower in this way uh, in, front of, uh, in front of the way, that, you know, in reaction to what Trump is doing. I mean, it's just really says a lot against them as people uh, in, in that position, in their role, that uh, you know, they, they, they keep dodging. We've been watching them for four years, kind of hem and haw and all this. And you really say, you know, is this the best we can do as a country, these kind of folks who like this, is this really the best we can do? I, and th that's sad. Um, I also would like to say that we need to do a stimulus, okay? All right, you had your Amy Barrett. That's fun. That's great. Now get some money to some people, okay? Because uh, it's really people are desperate out here. And I think some of the voting is very desperate by people. And so all these people who are playing political games need to focus on getting money to people who are desperate, getting health care to people who are desperate out here across this country. Uh, and it's it's fun in a way to watch all this nonsense. But, you know, there's a guy who's the lieutenant governor, I think, of Pennsylvania said it's like, you know, what if if uh, something and something were 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 food and 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 nuts, we could all eat at Thanksgiving. Right. So it's like it's over. There's 10,000 votes that potentially could not be counted in Pennsylvania. And Biden has won. Even, even if that case went forward, there's a guy who presented one of the affidavits in Pennsylvania who, under questioning from the Postal Service where he worked, recanted it. And then he went on YouTube to say he didn't recant it. Then I got the video of him recanting it. You know what I mean? This is just a lot of sh shenanigans uh, that uh, are pitiful. It's possibly a lot of it has to do with fundraising because there's a lot of fundraising letters going out to retire debt or whatever you know to set up some kind of new uh maybe trump radio station or trump television or something but that's all that's going on it's you know on on, on in the background of this in terms of the legalities but but, but um, ben ben yeah 70 million people voted 
for Trump. And you can't ignore that. I'm not Almost, ignoring that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Almost 50% of the people in the polls, I think it was 50, 51%, 49% thought that Trump had handled COVID better than anyone else would have handled it. Look, you're not going to get all this, Ben. I'm just telling you the reality. This country love- is bitter. Wait, wait. Is bitterly split. Bitterly split. Half of this country voted for Donald Trump. Almost half. Got 48% or 49%. I think the right. Republicans know exactly what they're doing. Sure. And you look at Georgia and the races there and the two most vocal proponents of the recount are the two senators whose seats are at risk in Georgia. The, the Senate is very likely to remain in Republican hands. I mean, what's his name? Purdue only missed by three tenths of a percentage point. I, I just think, you know, the Democratic Party, and I think this is sad, it's going to be a very difficult four years to get any of this done, frankly. We got rid of, we got rid of the Wizard of Oz. But Oz still exists. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm the forever. Well, I, I feel like I'm stepping in Walter's space here because I just wanted to <laughs> no, say, go ahead, Walter. Go ahead, ben. <laughs> okay. I, I, Walter, I just wanted to say that, I, you know, I'm in Toledo, Ohio, right? We're in the middle of the whole thing, right? Biggest thing, I think, for a lot of those people who vote for Trump is that they're desperate economically. And they hope that a businessman would turn things around for them. And they're willing to give them a break on this, that, and the other. There's been a lot of propaganda thrown at people for the last 10 months that's been nonsense about this whole COVID thing, okay? So maybe I'm too charitable, but that's what I think a lot of these people are about. And so, yeah, they can play their, the, the political games that they want now, and they will, but I really think that in the bottom line is that what people want is some money, some stimulus money. They want some health care to be taken care of. I just had one of my students' dads die of COVID down in Oklahoma, okay? He's the kid sick, or he's not a kid anymore. The kid sick, his mom's sick, his entire family is sick. The dad got sick and the dad died. And, you know, that is reality that people are dealing with, okay? And I think that that, getting that dealt with, Getting uh, the healthcare dealt with, getting some people some money has, will be something, whatever they believe. I don't care if they love Trump, hate Trump, or anything. That's what people are, that's where we need to have the focus here. And all these side games by all these people are distracting from that, which I think is the crucial set of, uh, of, of tasks that confront us right now. With 148,000 infections yesterday, 1,500 people dead. This thing is going up at a pace that they're talking us to be at 300,000 infections a day and 240, 200,000 additional deaths between now and Christmas, okay? This is reality. The other stuff is all this, excuse me for saying it, the BS and DC kind of stuff, but people need money and people need jobs and people need healthcare right now and so it's like i'd like to get all of them to come back to dc and say pass the stimulus right now you wanted to play your amy barrett game for a while great she's on the court now pass the stimulus right now go back to work because people need it out here at least that's the way i see it so far by the way down here in toledo uh the the state of ohio has a uh, two billion dollars they got in cares money they've only spent six hundred thousand of it Oh, sorry, six hundred million of it. Is it? You know, what, uh, that's what I hear. One point three billion dollars worth of money that should be in people's pockets has been sitting around for months for some reason down in Columbus. You know, it's the kind of stuff that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. People are desperate out here. I know, and it's just trying to make sure that, especially poor people, people who are newly poor, low income, low wealth, got to do something for them. That's all I'm saying. You see? No, but I, I don't. I don't disagree that that segment of the population agrees with you. I'm saying 70 million people don't. 
70 yeah, million. Yeah, but I'm saying that, uh, wait, wait, wait. that $70 million concludes a lot of poor people hey, like guys. that. Well, on, anyway, we'll let the okay, other guys sorry. we'll let the other guys jump in. But what I'm saying is, COVID, 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 and we all agree it's been terribly mishandled. Fifty percent of the people thought Trump did a great job on COVID. So that's fifty. Yeah, well, they're wrong. They're wrong. Well, they're wrong, but that's you know, what they the believe. Says they're wrong. So there we go. <laughs> ben, we're at Jeff? this point because they're wrong. Okay, sorry. we we got it. Hey, Walter. Sorry, Jim. Your go ahead, Jim. Jeff and I are friends, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I agree with an amalgam of Jeff and Ben there. Um, it's Trump versus democracy at this point. And I agree with Jeff that he's not going to concede. He's a narcissist, and it's not in his DNA to concede defeat. Um, so we, we shouldn't be looking for that. Um, we're going to have to wait him out to some extent. The issue is whether he does some major damage to our democracy in the interim while we're waiting him out. Um, indeed, he, the, the, he, did, he does still have apparently a very strong base. And the Republican officials are largely unwilling to, go, to push him to concede or go against him any anyway, because they're afraid of losing those Republican votes in his base. Um, so that's a problem. There are some hopeful signs. Uh, I think the fact that the senator who is the Republican senator who's instrumental in the intelligence committee, I forget his name, I'm sorry, um, came out today saying that if by Friday he isn't let into the uh, weekly brief or uh, daily briefings, I guess, um, that he'll try to do something about that. So there's a good sort of transitional thing that may be going on with Republican support. Um, Geraldo Rivera apparently tweeted today that he should graciously step down. Uh, I was very disappointed in Geraldo when he became a Trump addict, um, uh, largely because he, he, I don't know, Jeff, if you know, He's a former Reggie. He was a legal, legal services lawyer. Um, he had very liberal credentials. What, what happened to Geraldo? Well, he's coming around. Rupert Murdoch is coming around. Um, it looks like Trump's pretty much lost that whole Fox News empire. Um, that, you know, so things are slowly happening. It looks like democracy will win out over Trump. We just have to, we have to wait him out. But the question is, how much damage can he do in the interim? Uh, and that's that's troubling. It really is. Oh, Walter, can you unmute yourself and give us your take on this? Well, my take on this is pretty much the concern or the, the just the lack of respect for the rule of law. The 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 whole elect electorials college and the election system federally are matters of rule, rule, rules of law and the integrity of the whole election system and the electoral college are being just totally ignored by President Trump. That's my main concern is just he's just built a wall ignoring what has been tradition what has been the respected rule of law to elect a presidential and vice presidential candidate. I'm very concerned about the fundamental crisis that we're facing because of Trump's ignorance. Now, the other concern I have is what I think Jim, as well as uh, Jeff and Ben alluded to, is there are over 70 million voters that voted for Trump. We cannot ignore that and we cannot just put, push that aside. What concerns me is why aren't any portions of the 70 million people taking some stands to tell President Trump, you're wrong. You have to respect the tradition, the respect the rule of law, and you have to step aside. Now, I understand that some of the legislators or the elect, 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 
elected officials are hesitant to do that because they don't want to lose his support. But there are some, like Ben said, there are some common folks there in that 70 million people. They should also have a high regard for tradition and the rule of law. Why aren't they stepping up? Perhaps Fox News did step up to the point where they backed off, backing, blindly backing Trump in his world. Now, the key question now is, is this all going to stop? How long will it take to stop? And like everybody said, how much damage will be done to our democratic system after all of this is over? I'm, I'm very concerned about that because it doesn't look like there's any end to this for the, for the present time. And uh, like Chuck pointed out, there are deadlines that are coming up and a couple of the Republican uh, legislators have filed an action to try to continue those deadlines. So hopefully by January 21, these issues will be resolved and there'll be a beginning of a transition. But if that, fails, Chuck, I'm very concerned how long this will last. And, I, and I'm also cognizant of the fact that there will continue to be undercurrents throughout the next few years at least, but at least there should be a transition so that there will be a recognized leadership for the United States. Those are my main statements that I'm concerned about. Hey, listen, Walter, you talk about the rule of law, when you have Jones Day, I think one of the top five in size and income law firms in the country fighting for Trump mm. in many of these lawsuits that have been filed, you can't expect a farmer in Missouri to think that there's no validity. Mm. You've got one of the top law firms in the country filing litigation on behalf of Trump regarding the validity of the election. So that's scary. Let me yes, just tell yes. you, the bottom line of that is that's scary. Yes, very scary. It just shows you what money can do. <laughs> you said it, I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's important to pay attention to the money aspect too, because all, all of these huge donation pushes that are going on by Trump and the GOP now, hey, the press has already found out, oh, the first chunk of those goes to the Trump campaign, which he can spend any way he wants, in, in his view. Then the, the next chunk goes to the Republican National Committee. And if there is money left over, that might go to fight election results. So there's no question. This is a fundraising opportunity for Trump personally to try and get out of the hole and use it is it it's it's what it's always been but we've let's, seen let's see if jones flip. day gets stiffed on its bill that's all i'm going to say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right i hope they got it up front right yeah there, there are no liens and mortgages by right. the way i think jones day started in cleveland yeah it did I, I have some of my students are there so i don't know if they're working on this but i know some of my former students are there well, to great be honest, firm. I know them worldwide. They're great firm. There is there is some reaction, negative reaction. Uh, uh, associates of, apparently at Jones Day and another very large firm. Some of them are up in arms. Of course, the senior yeah, guys. Porter White. You know, there's a yeah. There, there's a few Trumpians that are at Jones Day, that were in his administration. Sure. And there are also a couple that Biden is appointing to his new administration team. So, oh, yeah. I mean, Jones Day is, you know, they're the top five. You're going to find people in every administration from there, right? But uh, it plays out. I, I watched one of these uh, Detroit cases, and, uh, you know, they, they got a long road to hope. They, they're, they're trying to argue the case of their client, but they got nothing. So now we're down to our last couple of minutes. Gentlemen, give a little thought. <clears throat> What is the damage potential that most concerns you? And how do we stop that from happening? Last two minutes. 
uh, that the people on both sides hate each other because uh, I think that's just unfortunate to 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 hate. Um, I have students who voted all kinds of different ways, but we still get along and work with them and do everything we can to be to you know be, be decent people to each other. That's the only thing I worry about is people get so hung up and somebody starts pulling out guns and shooting people because they get the crazies get going. I think the damage is immeasurable to our reputation around the world and at home. We've always been the ones to talk about the elections in Nicaragua or Africa. And now we have the president of the United States and his accolades constantly, Twitter and otherwise, talking about the election was a fraud. I think you cannot calculate the damage that's been done to the country around the world. Yes, I agree. I think the basic concerns we have is, you know, another civil war internally within the United States and also the reputation that we lose internationally. I think those are major concerns that we need to address uh, very soon, if not tomorrow. Yeah, I think we all sense that. And my personal sense is that if there was anybody to bring the calm, the dignity, the humanity, the leadership, and the strength, Joe and Kamala are pretty good choices. You're yeah. looking for Thank a cabinet. You are you looking for a cabinet appointment, Chuck, or what? <laughs> no, just a countertop. So time to wrap up, guys. We'll be All back right. in two weeks. <laughs> nice to see you, Paul. See you guys. Stick around for a little deep nice breathing. Nice to see Walter. All best, guys. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you.